Hey fellow mutants, welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and it's been a while since I've done one of these episodes because we're nearing the end of the show, but episode 300 I want to end it on, and I've been saying that for like a year now, and we just keep, you know, inching there, so we're getting pretty close to episode 300, but I just thought this was another cool bookend like we did with Transformers recently where I haven't talked about a lot of X-Men stuff, I mean X-Men 97 a little bit on Seek at Night and doing the cards, but um, the movies, the live action movies, I've always had a small connection to a lot of that stuff, and even pre-aneurysm with some of the comics and other things. And X-Men has just always been something that's been a part of our lives all the way back to our childhood, till we were eight years old in that first stack of comics our mom ever bought us. And so I just thought, well, this is good because it's another bookend. And after this, we probably won't talk a lot about X-Men stuff, you know, in live action, unless, you know, we see more of it in the MCU, maybe, but depends. Like, you know, it depends on where the channel goes. And as I get older, if I keep doing stuff, so, you know, so you never know, I never know. Um, but for now, I just thought this would make a good Seek and Destroy episode. So we're going to talk about spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine. I highly recommend not watching this if you haven't seen the movie. And if you haven't seen the movie, please do. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I know some people seem to be mixed on certain things of it and all that. And I haven't really watched anyone else's review except Red Letter Media, which kind of cracked me up. But once they got to the spoiler part, I kind of stopped because I, I think I got... I was like, all right, I heard enough of their thoughts and I don't want that to influence or be in the back of my head when I'm giving my thoughts. So I'll have to go back and watch the, the last half of their video. But I really like Red Letter Media. They're very funny guys. And I just, I enjoyed this movie a ton. Um, does it have maybe some, you know, plot problems and maybe some, uh, you know, common sense issues at times, you know, and even some of the story kind of falls apart a little bit if you think about it too deeply. But all that's okay to an extent, because even though it was that I do have criticisms of those, the movie itself was very fun and entertaining. And that does kind of trump certain things when you have a cast that is very charismatic and very likable, when they, the humor is, you know, really good. Not every joke landed for me, but a lot of them did. Um, and I just like the circumstantial humor a lot and more than some of the verbal humor. And I just like seeing this story of like, a, you know, I'm a big fan of buddy cop kind of stories. And movies like Plane Trains and Automobiles and other things where it's these two opposites that are, have to work together to accomplish some kind of goal or get somewhere. And that's what this movie was. And I thought they did a, just a stellar job at delivering that. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people are mad that certain characters that were in Deadpool 2 didn't come back for this one. But from what I saw in interviews, they said that this is not Deadpool 3. This is Deadpool and Wolverine. And that maybe and hopefully they'll get a chance to do Deadpool 3 and wrap up that whole storyline at some point. But for now, this is the one that made sense to make now to help them enter the MCU and to bring Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. And I'm okay with that. And, you know, and hopefully we do get a Deadpool 3 one day that does button up some of that other stuff and we get to see maybe Vanessa become copycat and, you know, get more into the action instead of just being the girlfriend. And I'd like to see some other things, you know, Zazie Beats, I'd love to see her come back as Domino and Cable. And I'd love to see more for sure. Uh, maybe they can fight Mr. Sinister, like in the video game, like whatever they do, I think it'd be fun. But for now, this movie was a blast and it delivered on what I wanted, which was a really good time. And I also saw people, and I know I don't want to get into semantics about cameos and stuff. And like I said, we're going to get into spoilers, so turn away if you haven't seen it. Um, but there is cameos in this movie, but some of them are more than just cameos. And again, I don't want to like argue over the semantics of that, of the verbiage, but it's true. A cameo, I think, is someone who's just in it for a second, like Tom Hardy as a stormtrooper in one of the Star Wars movies or something like that. Like, I feel like that's uh, a cameo. Or Rob from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, who is Ryan's business partner, um, you know, when they, with the soccer team and stuff. Like, he's in this as one of the TVA guards. Like, that's a cameo. You can't really even tell it's him, uh, but that's a cameo. I think they even cut a scene, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Um, but those are cameos to me. Seeing Chris Evans show up, that's more than a cameo. You know, like him on the TV screen would have been a cameo, but he actually shows up in person. And that whole scene was awesome because it took me a minute to figure it out. Like he was, he shows up and you see him and you're like, oh my God. And I'm like, oh my God, do I have Wolverine and Captain America and Deadpool all on the screen together? And then when he, right before they reveal that he's not Captain America, it clicked in me. I go, wait a minute. Cause he called someone like a dick or something. And I'm like, that's, oh my God, it's not Captain America. And then the reveal happened and you saw him as Human Torch. So I thought that was great, bringing Sabretooth back in and a different version of Juggernaut, uh, who was, I think, played by someone who was in Fall Guy with Ryan Reynolds. So it, it, it was a family affair, I would say, for like Ryan and Sean Levy and some of the people they worked with on their movies. But then also bringing, you know, Hugh in and, you know, bringing some of the other elements of these worlds in and bringing some of the other 
you know, superhero worlds into this, like Electra <laughs> was really cool to see Jennifer Garner again. And I love the line where they say like, oh, Daredevil didn't make it. And she goes, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> that's just kind of funny. A little meta there. Um, and then seeing what could have been with Channing Tatum as Gambit to give him some, you know, moments in the movie was really cool. Seeing Laura back was awesome. And then my absolute favorite. And I just, you know, I heard the rumor, but I just never believed it would be true, which was Wesley Snipes showing up as Blade and having a moment too, you know, and, and even getting his cheesy ice skating line back in there one more time. But I also love the line where they're like, there's, isn't there five Punishers? Which Punisher did you take that rocket launcher from? And he's like, hey, yeah, but there's only been one blade and I'm him <laughs> and there's only ever going to be one blade. And yeah, I know that's, you know, no offense to Sticky Fingers who did the, you know, the TV show version, but that's Wesley Snipes' mindset is like he will forever be blade. And it was cool to see him again. I got to be honest. It was, it was really awesome to see him again. So those to me are more than just cameos. They contributed something to the story. They had their moments and uh, and it, and they helped progress the characters to where Deadpool and Wolverine needed to go next. And it was kind of a, a, a nice love letter in a way. This movie was really genuine in it's like, uh, like crapping on previous things and current things with Marvel and Fox and everything. Uh, but it also was genuine in like delivering like, hey, well, someone loved this and we don't want to offend that person by making fun of it too much. And we want to show that there was real heart and soul that was attempted to be put in these other movies that some people might not like or look back on and don't like. And I think that was really cool of them to do that, especially in the end credits with all the behind the scenes shots of the X-Men movies and stuff was really cool. I, I, I really dug this movie. I thought it had a nice balance of heart and humor and, uh, and, and sincerity, which I wasn't fully expecting. And I really love the the payoff of like, and I guessed it before going in that Wade would not end up letting Wolverine make the sacrificial play. It was a it was a cool twist, but it was one I saw coming because I was like, that's how I would write that. I would write it to where Wolverine's gonna go and be the hero, and then Deadpool says, Nah, dude, I'm gonna do it because that's my purpose. Like that, you know, that's the thing Vanessa says, I'll never be, I'll never be selfless, and I'm gonna grow and be that person. And I, th I think I really love that. Like Deadpool to me is is not just like a bumbling idiot that makes, you know, pop culture references and meta jokes. Like he's he is those things. But some of the stuff that I really love in the Deadpool comics is when he has these moments that are sincere because the contrast is so perfect. He's someone who is just a complete mouth <laughs> and, and screw up. And so to give him some heart and sincere moments balances that and so every joke you know you you kind of are along the ride and then the payoff where he's sincere is a real payoff and it's a good character moment and i i love that about this movie and i, I thought that they they handled that really well um the conversations between wolverine and you know deadpool in this movie where you know he they're calling each other names but they're also like wolverine's just saying how pathetic wade is and wade's realizing maybe he actually is that pathetic and that i think helps push him to his goal at the end of like when he decides to step in and do the, the the hero sacrifice i think it was because of logan's words earlier in the movie and i also like what they did with the void and having references to the loki show and the tva and characters from that show pop up and paradox who i thought did a good job in the movie um and uh, even though his, his plan kind of felt like a little silly at times um but then cassandra nova who i thought was done very very well and her little band of henchmen and evil doers in the void where she was protected somehow. Um, and uh, and then, you know, she would feed Elioth, you know, whenever new people would show up. It was just really neat. And also to have this Wolverine that was a failure, you know, like, you know, he's someone who was at a bar when the X-Men were being killed because of all the things he's done, going to fight the Weapon X program and Sabretooth and all these other villains. It led to humans freaking out, seeing him in action to where enough of them became extreme you know were part of the government and came and you know took out the x mansion and he wasn't there to save anybody and he carries that guilt and weight with him and uh, and that's why in the end he was okay with making the sacrifice play because he's like i don't have a home to go back to but you do deadpool and deadpool's like dude i i can't go back to my home you know without being a hero <laughs> like what's the point like they're they're not going to love me and i'm not going to be happy and i'm just going to keep working my dead end job and and not grow and I, I, again, just found some things relatable about that and, and really loved that that kind of stuff was in this movie. And Sean Levy, I mean, I've been a fan of that guy for a long time. I love that movie, Real Steel. 
that he did with Hugh Jackman. I must have seen that movie like 20 times post aneurysm and uh, maybe more. I mean, I really, really love that movie. It's like Rocky with robots and we're big fans of Rocky as well. So to me, like having his career and see it grow into this big thing where he handles such, you know, big moments and big characters and big budgets, but has all these little tender moments and quiet, small sets. I mean, they had the big Ant-Man thing, which was funny. And I love the Paul Rudd joke they made, but having that big set piece and, but then having a bunch of little set pieces, it was just really cool. This, the world felt very lived in and felt very real, even though they were bouncing from world to world. And it was time travel slash multiverse type stuff, but told very linear. It was like a multiverse for idiots in a way, which is great for Wade Wilson to be the person to deliver that. And so it didn't get too complicated or, or get too caught up in all that. It just kind of was like, all right, here's what we got to do. Plan A, plan B. And then at some point we'll have to make a plan C if things don't go well in plan A and B. And all that just kind of worked in the film. And and I, I liked it. And it was just fun. I mean, the audience that I watched it with and my friend Nate, like people were cheering, people were laughing, people were clapping. And it was the first time I've seen that kind of interaction, I think, uh, with a crowd since Spider-Man No Way Home. And then before that, probably Endgame. So it's been a while. Not that I haven't been in theaters and I don't go see a lot of movies, but where people cheer or have little moments, but not like this. I mean, people were, there was, everyone had a popcorn bucket. Everyone had a, a like a Wolverine cup. We went to see it at an AMC and everyone had their things and their shirts. And it was just, it was awesome. It was very cool to be there on opening day and see something like this. And now to see it making a ton of money. I think it's at like $700 million already worldwide as of today. And it's only been out for one week and one day, like eight days. So just good. Like congrats to that, the movie, the theaters that are going to benefit from that too, that money. I mean, it's it was a, a shot in the arm that I think a lot of people needed for entertainment purposes in theaters. And I, I, I am glad it's delivering. And I, I think it was a really fun movie. And I know some people don't seem to like some of it or they thought it should have had more of this or more x-men in it or whatever but i feel like if you would have bogged the movie down with more you know cameos that, that that's all they would have been it's just more cameos um it's better to just have you know colossus and negasonic and some of those characters in the opening and then in the ending and then in the middle have these characters show up from other movies that uh do something and uh you know and yeah you could have easily had the deadpool core show up at the end and then the x-men show up to help fight them but all that's all it would have been it's just this big mess of characters jumping around and cg and and stuff and i think what they did with just that sideways old boy shot going down and you know the deadpool and wolverine fighting and saving the dog behind them and samurai good looking deadpool you know dying behind them like all that was very funny and well done and well executed and I, in the end, I, I loved the movie. I really did. I, I would say it's a 9 or a 10 even out of 10, even though it has imperfections and stuff. I always say that. I'll overlook certain things um, if they don't drive me too crazy. And nothing that I critiqued on this drove me too crazy because I was constantly entertained. And I actually want to see this again, even though it was an assault on my senses at times, because you know me with some of my issues. Like I, I, It's hard to be in a crowd and, and all that noise and stuff. But um but luckily, like, I really just was so locked in and I, I love this movie. And so I want to go again. I know Blue saw it and I know he liked it, but I want to go see it for myself again and just really uh, catch some things that I might have missed. And I'm really looking forward to owning this on, like, Blu-ray or, or, you know, digital or something where I can watch the subtitles because I had trouble hearing uh, parts of it because of people cheering and laughing and everything. And I I'm probably missed a couple lines. So I'm really looking forward to owning this at some point, adding it to my X-Men collection. So what did you think of the movie? I didn't cover every single little thing, but hopefully I covered enough. And I want to hear your thoughts. We can talk more about anything that I left out down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this movie. What did you think? What was your rating of it? Spoilers and all. Let's go nuts down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.